Hi there. Yesterday was rather a red letter day for me because not only did my HDMI Pi uh, monitor kit arrive, but also uh, from Apple, uh, an Apple, um, an iPhone 6, which I pre-ordered uh, a week before. So I thought this was a splendid opportunity to use the iPhone as a video camera to video the HDMI Pi and just to say one or two words um, about it and about one feature which I think some of you may find interesting. As you can see I'm very into using Sonic Pi which I've got loaded up onto the um, uh, onto the monitor at the moment and uh, we perhaps just have a little listen just to show that the thing does actually work. So let's get rid of the, uh, the credit screen there and uh, we'll run and play a little bit of this piece which is on it. This is a piece I've transcribed for it by a chap called uh, Claude de Jeanne. and um, you can see it's also utilising something else which is fairly new to Piland and that is the Pi Hut um, speaker which uh, is actually plugged into the side of the um, monitor and uh, the audio is being fed via the HDMI lead from my Pi. Now you'll notice that I've got that connected there because I didn't actually, let's stop this so you can perhaps see what I'm saying, I didn't actually um, put the Raspberry Pi inside the um, monitor case, even though there is room for it. Uh, if I pan down here, you can see that I've actually got more than one uh, Raspberry Pi here. That's uh, a Model B and I've actually got a Model B Plus uh, connected to the monitor at the uh, moment. It's actually uh, hiding in that case underneath. And this sort of rather monstrosity of, of Lego on top of it is actually um, holding the uh, the camera lens, which you can see um, in there, um, so that I can do some uh, video work with that. I'm actually using the, the iPhone, as I say, to do the videoing at the moment. Let's just uh, quit out of the Sonic Pi, um, back to the desktop, and there's the familiar Raspberry Pi logo. Um, now, if I pan down, you'll see that the thing I want to actually talk about is the way that I've mounted the HDMI Pi monitor. Uh, some of the, um, the, the larger Kickstarter um, um, pledges uh, involved receiving uh, a stand for the monitor, but uh, the one that I went for, uh, though it had a power supply, does not come with the stand. So I decided to make one out of Lego and I thought it might be of interest to, to others uh, if any of you got some Lego and you need a stand as to how you might make this. Um, I'm going to carefully lift the monitor off at the top here, a bit difficult to do one-handed while I'm still videoing, and just place it down there and then we can move forward and have a look at the stand. Now the stand, as you can see, is, is made out of uh, standard Lego parts and it's fairly robust. I can give it a shake, it won't sort of fall apart. And uh, it's constructed mainly, and uh, I don't, don't intend to do um, uh, bit by bit construction diagram, but I think from, from the video, if you want to make one, there should be enough detail for you to go ahead. Um, there are four major 13 uh, hole beams, two across the front and two across the back, which uh, give the structure to the um, the holder and in fact there is a further one across the side at each side so you need um, six of these beams to do that and they are mounted together by a five beam in the middle there um, with four pins holding them together and a gap of one hole between them just to get the desired width but the important bit as far as uh, holding the uh, monitor on is that um, it's first of all tilted by means of this 3x3 three three angled uh, connector, which you can see in the corner there, and that will raise it and tilt the stand up like that when it rests on the front edge there and at the back on the back edge just above my thumb. And in order to support the monitor, I use two vertical 7 beams, and these are mounted by 3x3 uh, three three angled connectors again, uh, one mounted at the front, and one towards the back of this other connector, just three holes in fact from the, from the corner here. And then the two verticals are plugged in there. And the idea is that the one nearest the front of the monitor goes up um, underneath up the, the, the gap uh, there where the, the pillars are. And the other one just goes at the back of the monitor and it rests at that. And so it just slots down 
at this side and at that side onto these two verticals. The two sides are exactly identical uh, in the construction and perhaps the only other thing to note is that there are various bracing pieces to stop this being too wobbly um, and at the front corner here we have uh, an angled um, 4 by 2 connector and that just uh, slots onto the, uh, the angled um, 3 by 3 uh, behind it at the front and there's also um, a peg in the hole just underneath it so that's braced firmly onto that and at the other end we use a um, two beam connector um, one of those black two beam connectors which is mounted there one with the, um, uh, the cross shaped peg at one side and into the, the, the circular one and we need another cross um, piece there to go into the four by two angled piece and a, a round peg into the other side. That's exactly identical on the other side and if we now move to the side which we've had a, had a close look at there and towards the back, at the back we have um, two further 13 hole beams. The difference is that these ones are mounted um, with the holes vertically whereas at the front they are mounted with the holes horizontally and um, at the corner it just slots straight onto the top of the beam going to the front there, goes across, is connected by a further five beam to the other side. There's two hole overlap on either side, one hole gap in the middle, and then that just slots onto the um, front to back beam at the other side. The bracing again is supplied by uh, the same two by four uh, angled uh, pieces there. Um, one mounted with two pins there and at the other end we get another of the two beam connectors um, just bracing it to the, um, the white beam going across the top and that makes the whole thing really quite rigid. I can pick it up, I can throw it around and it won't uh, come apart hopefully. Now let's make sure I get it the right way around uh, which is that way around so that you can see that it's tilted uh, naturally like that. And in order to use it, we simply take the monitor, and again, I'll try and pick it up, keeping my fingers off the screen. Uh, not very successfully, I think I'll have to clean it afterwards. And on the side, that just slots in there, and the same on the other side, and so the monitor just easily rests like that. And if we look at the sides, you can see uh, the position of the beams. One going up there, and one at the back, like that. Uh, I suppose if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of felt, uh, stick a bit of felt onto the uh, top of the beams if you're worried about scratching your perspex, but I think uh, it's not liable to be much of an issue. Um, I did actually, although I haven't got the Raspberry Pi inside this, um, hold it up uh, in the correct place inside. I took the back off and tried this, and there is actually clearance on this side with the Raspberry Pi, which is above, and with the leads coming out. So I don't think there are any fouling issues there. But if you wanted to, you could actually use, I think, probably slightly shorter beams for the verticals and you'd still get enough support for the um, monitor. So that's my contribution to the world of HDMI Pi. Um, as you can see, it's a very nice monitor. I'm very pleased with it. And I think Alex Eames and co have done an excellent job in bringing this to the Pi community. So if you get one, I'm sure that you will enjoy it. Hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, that's all for now. Goodbye.